All right, just arrived at the shop. This is a Fender Super Reverb. Very heavy amp. I just flipped it on. The complaint is excessive noise. Got the volume controls all the way down. Let's see what it's doing. Hmm. Oh, there she is. Interesting. So like I say, our volume is all the way down. Let's see if we have any tubes that are sensitive. Okay, I suspect that possibly it could be the output tubes or something in the inverter stage because if it was a preamp problem, having the volume all the way down would kill that, wouldn't it? So let's go ahead and get the chassis out and check it out. So we're going to shift gears a little bit here. I'm sure everybody out there has had a noise issue with their vintage amps. And a lot of these issues won't creep up until the amp is warmed up. And there'd be this strange lightning storm and then when you go in there to investigate it you really can't find anything wrong you put the tubes on a tube checker and they test fine even though they appear to be microphonic so what is an alternative way of checking these tubes dynamically well i've got the solution sitting right here and we're going to use that on the tubes of the super well let me walk you through the controls Underneath the meter, you see this little toggle switch, and there's A and B. This is section A, which is one triode in the 12AX or 12AT7 tube, and this is section B, okay? When you flip this back and forth, you'll actually see the idle current of each triode on the VU meter. That's what its purpose in life is. It's going to give you a wellness check. So let's say we're testing a 12AX7. The bogey is zero on the meter, which indicates approximately one milliamp of current. If I go over to the 12AT7, there's different resistors that switch in to bias that tube, and you should get about the same level, zero, okay? So this switch is either for your 12AX7 or your 12AT7, and you insert your tube into the test socket on top, okay? Here is my gain level. Okay, so under a no signal condition, run this guy full bore, and that puts the one megohm of resistance to the grid to ground on each of the triode elements. This jack is an audio input jack, so you can inject either an audio generator or your guitar and watch the signal on your oscilloscope. On the rear, we have our 120 volt AC input and there is a fuse internal. This knob is the null adjustment, okay? And that's what it originally was on this unit, so it's kind of cool because I elected to have that same feature on my dynamic tester. So this null adjustment actually balances the filament lines. So you know on some amps, you simply have 200 ohm resistors going to ground to give that balance of your filament circuit. This one here allows you to adjust it, and on the scope, you would actually see a slight reduction in noise level because we do not want AC interfering with our test on the filaments. Okay? Then we have our A and B output. Those are the individual outputs of the triodes. You can either hook these to your oscilloscope or you can pipe this through into an external amplifier and listen to the signal of that preamp tube. All right, let me give you a live demonstration of this unit with a 12AX7 from the Deluxe. All right, so I'm going to take my tube, plug it in, which is the 12AX7, and flip it on. You should see the current come up here on the meter, showing the tube warming up. There she goes. So you can see it's really close to the zero mark. That's section A, there's section B. So right now, the tube is idling. We're watching section A on the oscilloscope. So if I were to tap on the tube, 
I should be able to see if there's any microphonics on the scope. Now I do not see any, which is a good sign. Let's take another tube, an old crusty 12AX7 that I have out of my junk box, and let's see how it performs. This is a very vintage tube. I don't even know who makes it. There's some strange identification on it, but who cares? Here we go. Watch for the warm up. Oh, there she is. Once again, pretty good idle current and pretty balanced. That's the other advantage to this unit if you're trying to find nice balanced tubes, especially for your inverter circuit. This will give you that indication on the meter. It's really nice. Okay. All right, same deal on the scope. Let's see what we got. Now you can see there. You see we got some little events on the scope. So this guy's microphonic. So if you were to put that in your ramp, it'd probably be a noise monster. All right. Let's check a 12AT7 now. So you can simply unplug these. You do not have to cycle the power. So here is a 12AT7. This was the reverb driver tube from the Super. So we're going to go to 12AT7 mode. Just warming up. You can see our idle current isn't exactly up to par. A little weak. What's the other side look like? He's a little bit better. Let's see if we have any microphonics. Oh yeah, this one's pretty sensitive, you see that? Look at that. So let's take a new 12AT7, I happen to have some mullards, and let's re-perform this test. Alright, so I guess I should have looked before I told you guys I had a new mullard, but I do have a new Channel Master 12AT7. We'll put that one in and see how it looks compared to the 12AT7 from the Super. So you see our idle current is a little bit higher. How about microphonics? Look at there. She's clean as a whistle. All right. So that shows you how this little unit can detect microphonics and you can test these things individually without having to put them in your amps and say, well, I think I hear a noise, maybe I don't. This is a foolproof method for you to put in a good tube to begin with. All right, now I'm going to take my audio generator, and we're going to go back to the 12AX7 mode. We are going to inject a signal and look at it on the scope. All right, so this is the original 12AX7 that I removed from the fender. We're in 12AX7 mode, let her warm up. All right, now I have my audio generator set. We're going to pipe the signal in and look at the output on the scope. So there she is. Nice clean sine wave. So you can do the same thing with your guitar if you do not have an audio generator. But of course your guitar is not going to give you a nice clean sine wave to look at because you got other things going on right when you're playing the strings. But what's nice about this, you can say, okay, I've got a nice clean tone. How does it sound in my amp? And since we're only using one half of the 12AX7 at a time, you won't overdrive your amp. You can actually use this in series and listen to that tube before you ever install it. All right, so let me hook up a guitar so you can see that on the scope. All right, I've connected a guitar to the input rather than the audio generator. One thing I didn't mention to you guys is this input actually goes through a dual stage pot which feeds the grids of both triode elements. So the signal that you're seeing going in section A that we're monitoring would also be going out of section B. So you can flip your cable back and forth and see the signal on both halves of your 12AX7. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn her up a little bit. 
So there is your guitar output. Okay. So you can see I'm at about 0.1 volts per division. So you're seeing maybe a half volt signal or so. So if you were to throttle this back, you could actually drive your guitar amp and listen to that tube. So that's a pretty cool little compact unit, isn't it? And you can see the value of this when you're troubleshooting your Fender amps. Now this one was designed strictly for the preamp tubes of the Fender line. I do plan on making one that will test an EF86 for all you Vox guys. This is in the prototype stage. I'm shaking it down. I am not offering them for sale and I do not have the schematics ready. But I just wanted to show you guys some of the innovation that's coming through D-Lab Electronics.